Welcome to Speaking of Higher Ed, Conversations on Teaching and Learning. This podcast is produced by the Center for Instructional Innovation at Augusta University. I'm your host, Andrew Everett. The purpose of this podcast is to provide a resource that will help you create engaging and meaningful learning experiences. This is Episode 6 and our Summer Shorts episode for June, where we will quickly recap some key moments from the spring. Please share this episode and subscribe. New episodes will be back the third Wednesday of spring and fall semesters. On our very first episode, we were joined by Dr. Rhea Moreno from the College of Education and Human Development here at Augusta University. Dr. Moreno brings her enthusiasm for learning into her courses, both face-to-face and online, using creative modalities. For me, when I'm trying to think, okay, let's how can we innovate? I'm thinking, well, how can I move beyond just the traditional written response? Or how can I move beyond the lecture where, you know, the sage on the stage and here I'm presenting all my information to you? Because it's important then that if we change it up, more students' voices will be heard. We can honor different voices, different perspectives. Um, It makes it more engaging and innovative for the students if I'm not only teaching through different modes. And when I say modes, I mean things like, um, you know, audio, visual, so, you know, you can have video, but there's different types of visual as well. Um, You know, much more creative, uh, gestural, uh, sensory. There's so many different types of modes out there. And so thinking, how can we have our students learn in those different ways, you know, and not, it doesn't always have to be the same thing. It's interspersing different types of these, these platforms. Um, And then how can they also show that they're learning and think about their learning. So that whole process of it in different ways as well, because uh, bringing in these different modes is going to help those students show how they're going to be able to shine in their different skill sets. Because as we know, for example, not everybody shines as a writer. That might not be the skill set for every single student, but they might, you know, or or different types of writing. Like I had a student turn in something recently where I gave them an open, um, it was an open response. Okay. And I said, you know, the one thing is we've done, we've done the traditional written responses already. For this one, you can write, you can do something creative, a creative response. You can do something visual. You can, you can do dance. You can do whatever you want to show me how you're learning and how you understood what we read in class. So they had to interpret the material um, and then and then with some sort of some sort of response. And then, of course, like they had to connect it. So we had to see that connection. It's not just like, oh, here. (laughs) Um, But I had a student do a one act play. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it was written, but it was a one act play that absolutely mapped on to what we were studying in the class. And so I could see the content clearly coming through in a one act play, um, you know, versus another student did a spoken word. And so to me, this is where I could see that they understood the material and that they were shining in a way that just blew my mind. And then their peers would hear that and hear how each other, how they each individually interpreted the material and were able to process it. And so that builds a much more innovative discussion. Dr. Moreno suggests starting small by identifying learning activities or assessments that you can redesign. She successfully uses multimodalities in her undergrad and graduate courses. To hear this full episode, click on episode one on our show page at augusta.edu forward slash innovation. In episode two, Arthur Takahashi discusses multimedia learning principles. Richard Mayer is the leading scholar in this area. Arthur uses Dr. Mayer's principles when designing his courses. But before considering using these principles, we must first consider the three goals of multimedia instructional design. Before talking about the, the principles, I think it's important for us to, uh, to, to focus on some of the instructional design goals that Richard Mayer talks about. And the first goal is whenever we design a course, develop a course, is to reduce uh, extraneous processing, right? So basically reduce... Uh, all those um, elements in your course that are irrelevant to uh, your learning objectives. So anything that is, you know, it, it doesn't pertain to the learning objectives, you can get rid of that, right? So that's one instructional goal. Another instructional goal is to uh, manage essential processing, basically helping students um, build mental uh, mental models of what you are teaching. Start, start helping them organize uh, that content in their minds, right? So that's the second instructional uh, design goal. And the third instructional design goal is to foster generative processing, motivate your students to deeply understand 
uh, that content, to relate that content to um, things that they already know, to prior knowledge, right? And that's how you construct, how you build new knowledge, All right? So based on those three uh, goals of multimedia learning, then uh, Richard Mayer has done extensive, he and his team and other authors uh, as well, have done extensive research on uh, principles that can help you meet those specific uh, instructional goals. In episode three, we chatted with Dr. Candace Bond and Dr. James Garner from the Center for Writing Excellence here at Augusta University about artificial intelligence and higher ed. As AI tools like ChatGPT gain more attention, it is important for us to discover what these tools can do. Doctors Bond and Garner discuss thoughts on generative AI text, plagiarism, and assignment prompts. I think that one thing that we all have to do within higher education is be very clear with students and each other about what we are allowing students to use these tools for and why. Um, I so plagiarism, you know, by definition means presenting someone else's text as your own. Um, but so I do think that ChatGPT, in its most basic sense, it would be plagiarism. You know, like if you ask ChatGPT to produce an essay based on a prompt you get in a class, and then you present that as your own work, that falls under our definition of plagiarism. But I do think that if you are using ChatGPT um, to help you construct something that is your original content, like maybe, um, as Dr. Garner said, you've written a few paragraphs and you're trying to kind of make them more cohesive or or whatever. I mean, it is your, your original content and maybe it's just helping you revise or giving you kind of some ideas um, to help you improve it. That may, you know, it's still your, it's still your work. You've just made it better uh, through the tool. So I think the lines get a little bit murkier there. I think this is forcing some interesting conversations, some important conversations about the ways that we design writing assignments too. Um, so, you know, if uh, I've seen some very snarky remarks on Twitter, but you know, so the, the general consensus or not consensus, but the sentiment is, you know, if, if chat GPT can just, you know, spit out essays that do pretty well on your assignment prompts, maybe it's time to rethink, you know, mm -hmm. what kinds of assignment prompts and what kinds of writing tasks you're actually asking students to complete and how those are, um, you know, uh, meaningful and, and, I, and, and how those, you know, actually enhance student learning. Generative AI tools like ChatGPT are quickly being integrated into many areas of our lives, but AI is not new. Hear the entire episode by clicking on episode three on our show page. You can find the resources discussed today and all of our episodes on that show page at augusta.edu forward slash innovation. Thanks for listening. Please take a moment to rate, review, subscribe, and share this podcast. Speaking of Higher Ed is produced by the Center for Instructional Innovation at Augusta University.